Hi, I'm Underbelly, and you suck at producing. Recently, I've posted a couple of live looping videos on my YouTube. If you haven't checked those out already, I recommend you do so now, you dingus. Anyways, a bunch of y'all have requested that I do a video explaining the inner workings of my live looping setup. Let's get started. Okay, so check it. If we look inside my computer device, you'll notice I have five tracks. We got drums, roads, bass, guitar, and synth. Now, I've picked these sounds because I found them to be versatile, warm, and fresh, like ingredients you'd find at your local subway. When picking your own sounds, I recommend finding instruments you find yourself going back to again and again in your productions. Remember to make sure that no single sound is too overbearing, otherwise you won't be able to taste all the flavors in your live looping sandwich. After we've picked the sounds, it's time to add some basic MIDI controls. You'll notice that I've mapped the first five faders still attached to my controller to the volumes of each of these tracks. I've mapped them to the sends rather than the actual track volume faders because I found a maximum position of one of these faders on my controller would correspond with the plus six on the track volume, causing everything to clip. For this reason, I've mapped everything instead of the track volume to the sends, the A send, and I've also changed each one of these tracks to sends only, thus circumventing the issue. The last two faders on my controller uh, correspond to different controls. So the second to last one, we got my wub wub on my synth, just the, the low pass filter. Wowzers, do some crazy wub wub action. And finally, last but not least, uh, this fader on the far right controls the global BPM of the track, so I can change the tempo on the fly. Okay, so check it. When I'm doing my live looping, I usually go from left to right. So I start with the drums, then move on to the roads, bass, guitar, synth, and so on. Uh, you'll notice that over in my drum track, I have four clips, and all of these are just simply click tracks. They're a replacement for Live's built-in metronome. So they sound like this. Nice soothing, much more soothing, less grotesque than hearing this. <clears throat> Sorry, I just started to gag. Uh, so we can just go ahead and turn the built-in metronome off and instead just use the click track over here. Uh, the first three clips here are just in 4-4 time, last one is 6-4 time to just switch it up. Okay, so check it. Let's say I wanted to record a quick drum loop. All I have to do is uh, press play on one of the click tracks then I'm going to switch to pad bank B, which contains all my macro controls. Um, if I pick the play the pad on the far upper left, pad 13, I've mapped it to the overdub button in the live set. So now I'm able to record new drum hits over this existing click track. So why don't we go ahead and do that? I'm going to switch to pad bank C, where all my drums live. And then I'm going to do a simple drum loop, all right? You guys ready? One, two, three, four. Wowzers. Congratulations, you guys just made your first live loop. Give yourself a tap on the wrist. Now, if we're not satisfied with the BPM, we can always change it by moving this knob over here. Slow it down or speed it up. Wowzers. Okay, now that we've laid down a solid drum loop, let's go ahead and move on to the keys. I can switch over to the keys track simply by pressing one of these buttons below the faders uh, on my MIDI controller, which I've mapped to the arm button on each one of these tracks. So I'm going to go ahead and arm the roads, and I'm going to switch to pad bank A. Pad bank A allows me to create new clips in the session view. So I'm gonna uh, create a new clip on the roads track. I'm gonna hit the button on my MIDI controller, start playing something on my keyboard, and then hit the button again to trigger the loop. All right, 
Let's do it. One, two, three, four. And just hit the button again to trigger playback. Wowzers. Just that simple, people. So we can go ahead and repeat the process for the bass. I'm going to arm the bass track by hitting this button right here. Let's play something real quick. Hit the button. Hit the button again. Same button to trigger playback. And let's do the same thing for the guitar. Switch it over, hit the arm button. Let's go ahead and play something real quick. And if, let's say I didn't like that loop. I can just hit the button below it. Try recording a new clip. So you notice in my computer device there is a red box around the first four tracks. All this does, it's the same thing you would see if you had a launch pad or an APC. The red box, all the clips in the red box just correspond to the 16 pads on my MIDI controller. And I can go ahead and move the box around by hitting pad bank B where all my macros live, pressing pad 11 and wowzers. All of a sudden we have access to the synth. Let's go ahead and play something there. See, nobody knows you have to make mistakes. And I can also just get rid of the guitar here. And now we have, once we have a solid loop, we can go ahead and add some effects. So this first knob on the left is mapped to my reverb. Whoa, bring it back. I also got a simple delay going on here. Whoa! Whoop up! Whoa! Can bring it back. Over on the bottom here, I have some filters. So this is the low pass, and then finally high pass. I can also do some fun beat repeat stuff. So we switch to pad bank B, where all my macro is. And if I hit pad 14, twist this knob, which I've mapped the grid on the B repeat, so it goes faster. Ooh, I hit the pad again. We're back in business, baby. Let's try one more time. This button knob, excuse me, over here is mapped to the pitch decay. back up! Ah. Wowzers. And then once I'm done, just do a nice little fade out. Whoa. Wowzers. Okay, so check it. This concludes our journey inside my live looping rig. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the section below. I'm Underbelly, signing off.